folks, welcome to part one of a new Luthier's Lair series. Some Luthier in it, yes, and it is bass related, but it's going to be um, an object for my merchandise store that I'm going to make kind of from scratch uh, on the CNC machine mostly. Uh, some hand work to do, but uh, yeah, it's going to be, if you saw the announcement I made, it's going to be a bass guitar. Fender, actually, Fender Jazz Bass Body Shaped uh, Bass Guitar Wine Table for all your entertainment needs. So, we're going to start off with making the base of the table, <laughs> not the top, the base, and uh, let's see what we've got going on so far. A couple of tricks to show you, and then we'll start. We'll start making the thing on the CNC. Let's go. Okay, so I uh, picked up this nice inch thick piece of laminated pine from my local hardware store. It was already pre-cut so I thought cool that'll save on wear and tear of tools. So my plan is to actually make four trays on this base. The pedestal part's going to stand here and then the top of the table will go here. But this didn't come with the centre marked and instead of drawing trying to measure it accurately here's a good quick way of finding the centre of a circle ok, get a framing square if you don't have one they're pretty cheap framing square and put the edge of it really close in fact bang on the edge of the circumference of the circle there and make a tick mark here on the outside le leg, a tick mark here on the outside leg. Okay. Now you can see I've already pre-made this, uh, but I'm just uh, running through the actual way you do this. Then you're going to flip the square like that, and then you're going to find another edge. Make sure that's bang on the edge of the circle up here. I'm going to make a tick mark here and a tick mark here always on the outside of the framing square, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to join up the tick lines. So it's going to be that one and that one we just made. I'm going to draw a line there. And then the other ones are here. And draw a line there. Now, if you can see, um, I'll zoom in real quick here. Come in a bit. You see these where those lines intersect? That's the exact center of this circle. Right there. So this is where I'm going to start uh, my zero from on the CNC to get this done. Uh, we'll clamp her up and then we'll start the job. So I'm going to go and clamp this up and once it's clamped up we'll come back and we'll run you through all the CNC stuff for the base of the table. Cool. So the piece is clamped and in place and I've initialized the machine and I've put a V-carve bit in it, a 60 degree V-carve bit because I'm going to be doing tray chamfers to start with and you'll see what I mean when I get started. I'm shining this uh, actually this flashlight under here because the shadows are abysmal in here I'll maybe make something on the dust shoe here that will shine a light on the job so I can see it but anyway this is the, the poor man's way of getting the the, the correct uh, zero on this uh, I do have a bit zero but it's for right angles only not for centres so it's only for aligning on the um, on right angled corners. So what I do is I get this just a piece of thin, very thin, you know, filtery plastic stuff, you know, the coloured plastic. You can use a very thin piece of paper as well. I'm going to put that over there. Now I have the X and the Y axes fine. Now it's just the Z to go and I've, I've hovered it over the exact centre and I'm going to put that down here. Hopefully that'll hold in place, you'll, see, you'll have some light there, 
to see what's going on. Anyway, so I'll come back out a little bit. I'm going to hold this in place and I'm going to really micro step down onto this piece of plastic. Here we go, and the machine's going down very slowly, but I can see it, it's about to touch the plastic. Right. Now, I can't move that, so that, that's down a little too low. I just want to raise that slightly to get the zero. And we'll do that now. Just bits at a time. There you go. Just down a couple of notches there. And that's it. Yeah, one more. And there you go. That's the actual zero of the job. So I'm going to go zero in the machine and we'll start her up. Yes, indeed, we will. We'll start the job up. Get rid of this now. I promise to have better lighting the next time, but that's the exact zero. So I'm going to set the zero in the computer here. Actually, let's come round. Okay. Computer. If I go to run now, it's going to ask me set current location to zero. Yes. I'm going to load the file and I'm going to bring this up. Have a look at an isometric view, and that's what's going to get cut. It's going to be holes for screw holes for mounting the, the column on there, a central hole for power a power cord that's going to come through and the pockets themselves, the trays themselves. So that's the job I'm going to do now. So when I come back we'll see the machine running and I'll keep the, the dust shoe off as well so you can actually see the chamfer. Cool. Okay the job's ready to run now. It's going to be chips flying all over the place here because I don't have the dust shoe on but it's you know just need to vacuum up afterwards. It's better for, for, uh, in order for you to see. I actually should put this down a little bit about here. And you'll probably want to see it cut better. Although the lighting's terrible, I'm really sorry about that. But it'll become clear. Okay, headphone users, beware. Starting. Okay. in a minute with some time marks, okay? now that's the chamfers for the trays done um, I'm going to show you the uh, way that I measure the next part of the job which is it's always got that center reference now so I'm good I've just inserted a, a quarter inch spiral down cut bit in here I'm not too bothered about it roughing the bottom of the tray it being a down cut it might get a little rough but I can sand that later so for the most part I'm happy with the tool choice quarter inch two flute down cut mill end mill so 
let's uh, resume the operation. The machine is now going to go and measure the tool. Okay, let's go. And that's it being precisely zeroed in height and the tool, the actual tool length that's protruding from the collet and chuck is being measured right now. Now, for this part, I'm definitely going to need to put the dust shoe on. So I'm going to go do that. We'll be right back. Well, unfortunately, I had a little mishap with the dust shoe. It attaches by neodymium magnets in here. And two fell out and rolled away. I don't know where they are. So I've got this really heavily fastened on now with uh, some cable ties right here, zip ties and some tape just to hold it in place and that that should do for the next round of the job like I said there's a quarter inch spiral down cut two flute end mill bit in the collet and we're ready to go so I'm going to switch on the extractor and uh, beware this is very loud ok let's go Okay, so that's the trays done. Now the program is looking for, per drawing, is looking for an eighth inch end mill. So I'm going to take this tool out. Oh, wrong side of the spiner. And we'll just bring that out. It's always important to clean out the, the collet actually. If you're done with the previous operation, you can see there, I don't know if you can see that, but if I look, see there's gunk in there. God knows how it gets in there, but it does. Right, so call it back on, that's clean. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want the tool to slip while I am milling. So let's get a eighth inch, sorry, eighth inch end mill bit and we'll put that in we'll go and measure the tool per our usual routine and we will finish this job off okay I'm leaving the chips there for effect actually I should clear this area because this is the area I'm going to be doing next I'll vacuum up later uh, and I'm going to leave the extractor off just so you can see what it's doing maybe you can't because of the crap light but now I'm going to go and measure the tool so I'm going to bring it that way so you can see the tool being measured okay <coughs> excuse me it's a messy business isn't it mmm yes the tool being measured. And 
it's all happy with that, and it's really nice and happy and stuff. You know, it just smiled at me. So I'll come back in here, and we'll set the spindle to 18,000 RPM. Off we go. Okie dokie, yeah, <coughs> looking good, looking uh, very good in fact, fluff there, that's okay, the down cut bit was okay on the three uh, surfaces here, a little bit of sanding required to take away some tool marks, but that's about it, so let's uh, release, release, I should say, you didn't hear me from the clattering about there. Let's release the uh, the piece from the board and see what we've got. I'll probably not lift it up right now to the camera, but we uh, should be able to see it unclamped. There's still some dust and stuff in the holes there, but that's fine. I'll let it get blown out. Just move that out of the way. Last one, and we're dead. Okay, I'll lift it up slightly, I guess. Yeah, went right through the bottom. That's good. That's it there. Yep. That's it made, and as you can see, it's four trays, so. It's a table for four. There's going to be four places to put wine glasses, centerpiece for wine bottles in, but that's it really for that. That's ready to get sanded and finished. And we're done with the base of the table. Pun intended. Put your tools away. And as usual, get the workplace nice and tidy. There you go. Not bad, right? Looks okay. Pencil mask and stuff in it. And I've not de decided what colour to make this. I'm actually making this uh, one for a friend who, who has expressed interest. So, yes, indeed. It turned out good. Uh, the machine did very well. It did all this in about 40 minutes, I would say. Uh, I don't want to push the feed rate of this because the bits I have are kind of cheap. Because I'm kind of cheap, but I'm not. When it comes to really good stuff, I'll get better bits. This is like the second prototype, just to make sure everything's working out okay. And so far it's perfect. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell these the bits. These are like... 15 bucks each, pretty good. And they last a long time actually, quite a long time, until they start to wear. You can tell when they start to wear, when you hear a ringing in the wood, you just hit stop, and just air cut everything else with a new bit until it gets to the place you were, and you're good. Or you can stage it, you know, it depends what software you've got. So Some software allow you to jump to a certain procedure, and you can do that, and if you export it, all the procedures in, in G-code, you can skip to the G-code you want to execute and then do that, so it's fine, yeah, awesome. Let's start now on another part. 
Well, that's about it for episode one of uh, making the base wine table. Yes, indeed, the gas base base wine table. Uh, hope you liked what you saw. It was, it's kind of interesting to see the CNC machine going. Uh, maybe in the second episode I'll give you a quick uh, preview of the actual drawings that I did uh, to make this. Um, just, you know, a quick glance. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been pretty good so far. No glitches, the machine's working perfectly. So yeah, can't complain. Stay tuned though, because in the next part, we're going to be making the column that goes in the middle, right? It's going to house, well, I'll tell you in the next episode, it's going to house some really cool little gadgetry that I've been working on. If you've been following me on, on the facey there, you'll probably know what's going to go in there. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, stay tuned for more. And uh, as always, stay safe, be good. And, uh, you know, if you like what you're seeing here, consider subscribing to the channel. It doesn't cost anything. It's absolutely free. No obligation to be a jet sinner. Anyway, no, that's just a line from a song, I remember. And, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. I would subscribe. Please subscribe. It's awesome. And, uh, yeah, catch you next time. Thanks a lot for watching, folks. And see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.